Longevity Lifestyle Designers. This is Zach here with Secrets of Longevity.com. This recipe here today has a purpose in that it's to create these bite-sized balls. They almost look like um, those Timbits if you have Tim Hortons where you love and you get those, but they're not Timbits at all. They're full of superfoods and adaptogenic herbs. And this is something that you can use as a vehicle to bring more of these adaptogenic herbs and herbal extracts into your body, but also to stagger it throughout the day. Um, so one of the main ingredients that is going into this is spirulina. So I use these sometimes when I make them as a little boost through the day between meals if I need a little bit of protein to carry me on, if I happen to be more active at a certain time and I'm not getting large enough meals into me, then a little bit of extra protein helps uh, stabilize the blood sugar and gives you more energy until your next meal. And also if you're going to eat these at different intervals, maybe two or three times a day, you're getting uh, small doses of the adaptogenic herbs that you're adding into here. And the original pill, as it were, the modern day pill, a lot of people have an aversion to the idea of a pill or any sort of uh, medicine that they're taking, whether it's uh, herbal in a capsule or even uh, pharmaceutical. I think there's a good reason to have an aversion to pharmaceuticals, of course. But if we look at the history of taking things in little capsules or in pills or in the form of something that you just pop in your mouth. Um, the history of that that spans back through traditional medicinal systems has evolved to the point of being this really concentrated toxic f drug that people are taking in capsule form. But when you go back to the very first ways that some of these herbs and foods were being used, they were actually taking herbs rolling it up with some sort of sticky substance, it could have been tree sap, honey, any sort of resin, and they're combining one or more herbs or superfoods, rolling into these balls, and then taking it, and that was, uh, a shaman would um, prescribe that, I guess you could say, or it could have been a Chinese doctor or an Ayurvedic doctor. And if you go into Chinese herb shops, and you, you can get pills of uh, certain Chinese herbs, and they'll often basically just be the herbs mixed with honey rolled into these little balls is probably done in a little more mechanical or factory process form than it was originally in China with these Chinese doctors. But um, you can get these pills that basically are just the herbs in these little forms and you take a certain number of them a day however it is uh, prescribed to you. But so the idea behind this is that it's both, both nutritive and then you're also getting a steady amount of herbal adaptogens into your body. If you're using elixirs just at one point in your day, you're getting a hit of strong herbs, which is great for that one part of the day and a little bit afterwards, but the benefit of tonic herbs can be enhanced if we take it two or three times a day in equal amounts at those times, and then it's continually in your bloodstream, it's continually having the tonifying benefits on your tissues and organs, and that's the intent with these uh, Jing balls. So the first ingredient we're going to put in here is spirulina, and my intent with the recipe is to try and make enough for a week's worth of Jing balls to have three to six a day. So depending on how often I feel I need to take them. Hopefully we're aiming around 30 to 35 uh, Jing balls once I've rolled them at the end. So this is about a little more than half a cup of spirulina. And spirulina is the highest whole food source of protein on the planet. It's pre-digested. It also contains, because it's a blue-green algae, some phycocyanin and other uh, immune potentiating and polysaccharide type qualities that are basically good for the whole body. And the next thing we're going to add here is one whole cup of cacao powder. And because it's going to be highly medicinal, we want it to be highly absorbable and the cacao is going to help open up the capillaries in the digestive tract to absorb the beneficial qualities of all the things we're going to be putting in here. So of course I just have to slowly pour out the cup. It smells amazing. I'm not using the cow nibs in this one because we want to keep it very fine because we're not going to be blending this, we're just going to be mixing it by hand in a bowl. So it's just going to be powder, no nibs or anything like that. Then I'm going to add several tablespoons of maca. And of course, maca, cacao, spirulina, they've all been consumed together for centuries, if not thousands of years, millennia. I'm going to go for eight tablespoons of maca. And because we have to remember this is going to be 
basically going to be taking a tablespoon a day over the course of a week. It's three, six. Mark is also high in protein, so that's just adding to the blood sugar stabilizing effects of this um, recipe. Then we're going to add two whole tablespoons of shilajit, and this also helps with the absorption capabilities of this recipe. It has a very strong flavor, so I don't want to do any more than two tablespoons. It's already going to be a very medicinal tasting end product. Um, so if you're particularly fussy about bitter and astringent and very intense flavors, you might want to skip the shilajit um, or just put less in. And it's an Ayurvedic herb that is always used in conjunction with other herbs to help with their absorption. And we're also going to use the rest of this package of Dwanwood Reishi from Hyperion Herbs. And you can find all the Hyperion Herbs and other ingredients in this recipe in the info box below. And I'd say that's about two tablespoons, or maybe a tablespoon and a half, of Dwan, organic Dwanwood Reishi extract. Very high in polysaccharides, amazing stuff, one of my favorite all herbs of all time. Then we've got cordyceps, and this is a cordyceps extract, which you can also find below. And I'm going to put in two tablespoons of this as well. The last herb we're going to add is hoshuwu, and there's probably about the same amount of it as there was the duan Reishi, so I'm just putting the rest of the bag in. I have to do another order soon. And uh, very high in zinc, it's a great tonifying yin jing herb. And so all of these herbs are tonifying to the jing, especially the shilajit and hoshubu, as well as the cordyceps. And just again for a more great flavor, we're going to add some mesquite, which has a great smoky malty flavor which goes along with all these things we're adding. I'm going to put four tablespoons of it in. And then to bind all of this together, I have on the stove right now, sort of on a very, very low heat, actually it turned off, it's just warm now, um, coconut butter and honey, so it's melted down. So I'm going to turn to this interesting consistency, I'm going to mix that in and mix it by hand, and then I'm going to start forming the balls and put them in the fridge, and they're going to harden into these spheres that you can then pop in your mouth whenever you need to have them. So there's about half a cup of coconut butter and a quarter cup of honey, and as you can see it's turned into sort of like, it looks like mashed potatoes almost. And I'm going to just throw that right in there. I'm actually not going to mix it by hand. I realize it's going to be a bit too messy. So I'll have to mix it with a spoon. But I will be rolling it by hand once um, it's all mixed in there. And there's almost certainly not going to be enough uh, liquid to bind all this together. As you see, it's a very full. Um, so I'm going to have to add some water. And the water will be fine in terms of being mixed in with all this. So tip when adding water, Less is more because you're going to have to mix it in and you're going to have to check to see how well it mixes in and then you can add more. It's easier than to take it away because you're just going to add more spirulina cacao and then you're diluting the herbs and it gets a bit messy at that point. So as you can see it's starting to turn to a big globby dark greenish brown mass and that's all good. Then I'm going to add a little bit more water. It's probably going to be the last amount of water I'm adding. And I'm adding some red mandarin essential oil to give it some interesting flavor. There's really not much of it left at all. That oil. So I'm actually going to add some sweet orange essential oil too because that's obviously very similar. Citrus. And you could add cinnamon, you could add nutmeg, any combination of spices you think would think might go well with this. And add a few more drops. Quite a lot there just to... Uh, give it a strong flavor that helps synergize with all these sort of strong bitter but also pleasant flavors in some cases. I'm going to mix that in really well. I put that on top of the liquid so that I wasn't putting the oil straight into the batter but into the water so that it could diffuse across a larger surface area so that I'm not getting strong concentration of uh, the essential oil all in one spot. So in the end I figured I'm going to get my hands in it anyway so I'm going to just dig right in and uh, get them messy. I'm going to take a little chunk of the doughy mass and sort of form a ball with it. 
and it's quite soft at this point, but you just basically, I don't need to teach you how to roll a sphere, I'm sure you did this as a kid with Play-Doh or something, but uh, yeah, just make them, you could really make them any size you want, I usually make them about that size, put it in a Tupperware container or on a plate or preferably something you can cover over because you're going to keep it in the fridge for up to a week, and once you've made all of them, put it in the fridge and let it cool overnight or for a couple hours and then start to enjoy the super adaptogenic herb jing bulbs. And there you have it, all the jing bulbs are finished. And just be careful, you might have something stuck in your teeth if you're eating these in public.